what is food mapping? Okay. And I'm going to go into an explanation that goes into some scientific detail a little bit about this. So if you need to take notes, feel free to take notes. Food mapping, there's many types of food reactions. Okay. But there are specific types of food reactions that is very triggering for people with autoimmunity. So you may have food reactions or immediate anaphylactic allergies, like you eat shrimp, your lips swell up, you can't breathe. That's not what I'm talking about because you already know what those are. That's the devil you already know. What we're talking about, and there's multiple other types of food reactions, and those are all part of our food mapping process is to educate people to differentiate all the different types of food reactions you could have. Food mapping actually is looking for the slow, low allergic reactions that is triggering autoimmunity and inflammation in your gut. This is the devil you don't know because the reactions to these foods take anywhere from three hours to three days to show up. And it's not going to be asthma. It ain't going to be hives. It's fatigue. It's anxiety. It's palpitations. Okay. It's inability to lose weight. It's gas, it's bloating, right? And it is not happening immediately right after the consumption of food. So you can't figure this out. Hey, if I can't figure it out, you can't figure it out. I had to go through kissing hundreds of tests with thousands of people to figure out, is there really good testing for this? And this brings up to the, my big point here, which is that you're going to read a lot of junk out there about how, oh, just go get food intolerance testing, go get food sensitivity testing. And that's going to be your solution. How many of you, and this is completely different than food mapping. I'm going to tell you that right now. How many of you have already done food sensitivity testing, either mail order or with doctors before, only to find that the data wasn't accurate, was not accurate, not usable, or only to find you're supposed to eliminate 99% of food on the planet? How could that be real? It's not. So the big problem is the quality of testing involved with testing these slow autoimmune triggering type of reactions most of the companies have very poor testing quality and results. So when you, your conventional doctor says, oh, there's no good food testing, in a way, they're kind of right. Because I would say out there on the market, 95% of testing in the market are really problematic, meaning they're not very accurate. They don't produce good data. That's not money well spent. I don't care how cheap or how expensive it is. That's not money well spent if it doesn't get you the desired results or accurate data, right? The other aspect of this is that we're also dealing with an autoimmune population or people who have a dysregulated immune system, which means that those of you guys that are watching this or your family, your kids, people that are watching this, your immune system is either really highly reacting or really burned out and underreacting. So what that means is we're dealing with a population that tends to have a lot of false positives and false negatives, even on a really good test. Okay. So imagine number one, not getting the right test. So number one, we do the right test and I had to kiss hundreds of tests to find out what the right test is. Number one, number two, I know based on these testing on thousands of people with autoimmunity and, and chronic inflammatory diseases, what are false positive and negative patterns? And I teach you that how important it is, would it be for me to teach you? So if you ever did this on your kids or on your husband or on your mom, that you know what's not a real positive and what's a false negative. How important would that data be in you doing any test? You got to do the right test. Number two is you got to know from the expert exactly what are false positives and what are false negatives. And then the other thing is why not base your data, your decision on what foods to remove on specifically clear data points that you know are real positives? How much would that change your life right now if you had a test where you knew exactly, oh, I don't have to remove 90 foods, I have to remove three. What if that was the case? And how many alumni here are watching? And just to demonstrate the point, if you're an alumni here, if you can just write down the couple things you found out that you had to remove, that would be great. Just to show the diversity and personalization that's here. Not everybody's going to be the same at all. For Margaret, it was onions. For somebody else here, it was eggs. For someone else here, it was sesame, broccoli. Broccoli's healthy, you guys, but broccoli was triggering this person's autoimmune attack. Who knew? I knew. And there's a tool with which you can figure this out. So it's important to understand that there are false positives and false negatives to testing, and you need to be expertly trained to how to understand what those things are. The other thing is, is that 
this is the opposite of an elimination diet because guess what? Most people coming to work with us find out that they've been eliminating food for so long. They're so sick and they're so in a flare that when they get the data and they see as those three things, there's the other 198 items that they could eat. We're actually working more with people on how to reintroduce food, variety, and fun back into their lives. So this is not another elimination diet. You may want to call this data-driven reintroduction diet, um, where it's just opening up a world of foods that you know are not only safe, but they're going to heal you. Okay. So this is to me a very data driven approach based on having the right test. Number one, two is training clients directly you on how to think like me to know what the false positive false negatives are. And number three, using precise data to know what to eliminate, but also what to reintroduce. So to me, data is definitely king. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.